As far as I understand it, and let me be very clear that I'm no expert in regards to digital audio systems, the OctaTrack is always running natively at 24-bit, as that is the bit depth of the input and output converters. However, you can independently set the flex format and recorder format to 16-bit. In fact, these project settings default to 16-bit when creating a new project. If you're somewhat familiar with digital audio and the implications of changing bit depths, this begs the question of whether the OctaTrack ever applies dither. When you reduce the amplitude resolution of digital audio, this can result in artifacts referred to as truncation distortion, and it is ameliorated by adding mathematically generated noise in order to mask the truncation distortion. This artificially added noise is referred to as dither. If you want to learn more about dither and the practice of using it, check the links in the description. I'm not aware of any explicit dither feature or function in the OctaTrack, and a quick search through the manual for dither, 16-bit, and 24-bit doesn't turn anything up regarding dither or lack thereof. Since this is a new project, the flex format and recorder format are currently set to 16-bit. To start this test, I'm going to change both of them to 24-bit. I'll leave all these other settings at their defaults. The first thing I'm going to do is change track 1 to a flex machine. And now I'm going to go into the record setup menu for the first record buffer. I'm going to turn off all recording sources and set the recording length to 16. Now I'll place a record trig, start the sequencer, and remove the record trig to get a recording of perfect silence. Now I'll use the track button and edit button combo to take a look at the record buffer. Let's take a listen to that. As we expected, pure silence. Now let's save a copy of this 24-bit but completely empty recording. Let's give it a descriptive name, like 24-bit silence test. Now I'm going to assign this 24-bit silent file to the flex slot on track 1. Now I'm going to go into the audio editor and normalize this file of silence. I'll hit trim to select the entire file and then open up the edit menu. Now let's take a listen. And not surprisingly, we hear absolutely nothing. So now that we've verified our file is completely silent, let's change the flex format to 16-bit. When you change the flex format, flex slots are reloaded with the saved files. So it's conceivable that the OctaTrack could potentially apply dither to flex slots when changing them to 16-bit. Assuming, of course, that the source file is 24-bit. Let's take another look and another listen at our silent file. Since the flex slot was reloaded, we lost our previous normalization. Not that it actually did anything, so let's normalize again. Still getting absolutely nothing. This test appears to clearly demonstrate that no dither is applied when loading a 24-bit source file into 16-bit flex memory. Let's try a slightly different test. This time I will resample a 24-bit source file into 16-bit flex memory. I'm going to go into the recording setup menu and set the source 3 to track 1. I wouldn't necessarily assume that this resampling process would apply dither, but it makes me feel better to rule it out as a possibility. Now I'm set up for sampling. Let's start the sequencer and remove that record trig. Now let's see what we've got. There's some sort of signal in there. Still too quiet to hear anything though. Now I'll assign that first recording buffer to track 1. I have a playback trig down, so it's looping the sample. Now let's see what happens when I normalize this one. That doesn't sound like dither. Apparently that's some sort of artifact from the internal resampling. A tiny bit of digital audio discontinuity that was amplified by the normalization. Now, as far as my understanding of dither implementation best practices goes, it actually wouldn't make sense to apply dither individually to each file that needs converted to 16-bit. You really only want to apply dither one time, and that's right before the final audio output. So perhaps by using the main output as a resampling source for this test, it's not unreasonable that we might anticipate a different result, as the OctaTrack may only apply dither on the final output stage. 
However, using main as a resampling source gives the exact same results I have already demonstrated. You may also consider my test using a completely silent file to be insufficient, but I performed the same tests using a source file that was not completely silent and obtained the exact same results. That variant of the test takes a bit more time to perform because you have to normalize only the sections of the source file and resamples that contain complete silence. So, does it dither? Probably not.